on this computer like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go share screen, share screen, and here we are. All right, so welcome everybody. This is gonna be our demo quick video of how to do the game and then how to do the advanced features. All right, so I'm gonna go to see inside. And because I'm a smarty, I'm going to remember to do file, save as a copy. You don't need to do this, but I don't want to have it mess up my original game. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is the super fast version of putting this game together. All right, there are four main events that are important for the donut. When the green flag is clicked, when the space bar is pressed, when the sprite is clicked, and when I receive start round. So not message, I'm gonna make a new message, and when I receive start round. These are the four big deals for the donut. And so I'm gonna to need to kind of know what to do at each one of these places. All right, green flag, I pretty much wanna do intro and hide. I don't really wanna do anything else. If I think anything else, I can add it. Okay, um, when the space key is pressed. All right, well, remember we need some variables. We want to be able to like tell the game to start on level one. We want to be able to have a score. So I'm going to go ahead and go to variables and I'm going to make a variable. First one's going to be level like that. And then I'm going to go back to variables, make another one. And then this one's going to be score. Okay. And so when the space key is pressed, when we're starting a brand new game, I want to switch level to one, okay? Now I also want to make sure I get off of this intro backdrop. So I'm going to go switch backdrop two, and I think we called it beach with a, or bench with a view. Okay, so now I'm on the right level, I'm on the right backdrop, and basically now I just want to tell the game to start. I'm going to go to broadcast, and I am gonna broadcast start round, okay? All right, now, when I start a round, what basic things do I need to do? Okay, well, every single round, the score is gonna start at zero. I'm gonna get this one set variable. Set, instead of level, I'm gonna get score, set score to zero, okay? Now, I wanna make sure that um, my donut is the right size. So I'm gonna go to looks, I'm gonna get set size to 100%. If you think 100 is too big, you could start it at 90 and then make it get smaller from there, but you get to decide. Um, what else do I need to do? Anything else? I can't think of anything else. Um, we'll kind of leave it there for now. And if I remember something, I'll go get it. Show I know is gonna go inside that loop. So then basically I need my loop in control down at the bottom, the repeat until loop. Now, one thing I noticed from a couple people's games, it still was possible to get more than one point at a time. Like you could be at nine points and you could double click and get to 11 points, okay? So one way of taking care of that that I wanna show you is instead of using an equals sign, use a greater than sign. And watch how this is going to work. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, so I want to repeat until the score is greater than nine. Okay, now think about that. Greater than nine is 10, obviously. So I could just say equals 10. But let's say you had nine points and you double clicked and you got two points and now you made it to 11. 11 doesn't equal 10, and you wouldn't be able to beat the round. But 11 is greater than nine, so whether you get one point or two point or three points, anytime you're above nine, it ends the round and you're good to go. All right, so inside the round, I'm gonna do, oh, I'll go ahead and do the big version. Uh, let's go to motion, and we're gonna go to go to X and Y. And then operators, we're going to get pick random once, pick random twice, and we're going to go from like negative 180 to 180, somewhere around in there. And then on the bottom, what did we say? The bottom was negative 120, maybe negative 125. And then the top, maybe around there is 
like 130. Okay. All right, so that gives me the random location on my donut. Um, and then basically now I want to use my show. And then I want to go to control. I want to get weight. I'm going to let it just be one second. That'll help it go faster. Okay. So now I've got my donut randomly locating. And now I'm going to build that really cool if then else sentence. Okay. So the only time I make it down here is once the score is greater than nine. Until the score gets greater than nine, it's going to be staying inside here looping. Okay, when score is three, when you get six, when you get seven, it's still in here doing this loop. But as soon as score is 10 or 11 or 12 or anything like that, then it will be done with this loop and it will go to this next thing. And so that means I just beat a level and I want to check which level I beat. Now, I know I just showed you about using greater than. You use greater than when you're not absolutely sure that um, it's gonna change nice and easy and smooth. Like levels, levels don't change two or three at a time. Levels just change one at a time always. But points, sometimes points change fast. Or let's say something was like moving sideways. It might move sideways fast. So greater thans are great for moving sideways for scores, but for something like level equal sign works perfect. So I want to check if the level equals five. And if I just beat level five, well, that means I beat the game. Okay. And so then what I would do is I would come to events and I would get broadcast. And instead of message one, I would do a new message and I would say you win. Okay, like that, broadcast you win. And here is the win thing on the green flag, it hides, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an event that says when I receive, you win, okay? And then I'm gonna do a couple of things just to make it a little bit fun. I'm gonna get show, I'm gonna get set size to one, Okay, and then I'm going to go to control and I'm going to do that same kind of loop we did many times. I'm going to do it repeat 50 and then I'm going to go back to looks. I'm going to get change size by two. And even to make it a little bit more fun, I'll get change color. And I'm going to go ahead and do it by like a small odd number, like seven. Okay, and that'll just help it be different every time and it'll change little by little. Okay, so now if I run this, there's wind getting bigger like that. Maybe I'll drag it into the middle. Maybe it could even get a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll go three like that. Let's try it. Look at that, beautiful, okay? Um, and then if I wanted, it would be incredibly easy to just duplicate this and then basically go change size by negative, sorry, negative three, like that, okay? So it gets big and then it gets small like that. And if I want, I could put that in a forever loop. I put both of these repeats inside a forever loop and now it gets big, small, big, small, and it just sits there going back and forth, okay? All right. Um, oh, and then maybe what I would do, here's like one good thing. So now let's say you decide you want to press the space bar to start the game. So I go to here and it says when the space key is pressed. So basically think about what I want to do. I'd want to hide. I just duplicated that one. And I want to stop that forever loop. At the bottom of control is one we're going to start using on it every once in a while. Not stop all, that would stop every program everywhere, but stop other scripts in this sprite that will stop this forever. Okay, all right. So now I'm coming back to the donut and here was our thing here. If we just beat level five, we broadcast you win, so we just fixed up you win. And now if you don't beat level five, well, that means maybe you just beat level one. Well, what happens if you beat level one? Well, you get to go to the next level. 
I'm going to change level by one. We wanted a new backdrop, so I'm going to go to looks, and I'm going to get next backdrop, not costume, next backdrop. And then we're ready to start the next round, so I'm going to go to events, and I'm going to get broadcast start round. And that really is the main, main part of this program. All right, so now let's remember what happens when you click on a donut. All right, when you click on a donut. Um, first thing we wanted to do was sound. We wanted to start the sound chomp, okay? Um, we wanna make sure you get a point. So I'm gonna go to variables and I'm gonna get change. And I don't wanna change the level, I wanna change the score by one, okay? So I've made a sound, I've changed the score. Remember how we were gonna make the donut get smaller. So I'm gonna go to looks, I'm gonna get change size and I'm gonna make it change size by minus two, like that, okay? And then the last thing was hiding, telling the donut to get off the screen. All right, there it is, and let's check out our game. There's our intro, we press the space bar, boom, we're getting points, everything's good. Let's see, I'm having it be one second, and that, there we go, level two, and we're looking good. All right, so the game is basically working. Um, I'm going to move level here. I'm going to move score here. Okay. Um, and we're ready to start adding in these extra features. All right. So here's Hunt the Ghost. Here's the directions. And now I'm going to go look at these two ideas. All right. The first one says make a timer so you have 20 seconds to finish a level and make it so the ghost waits less time after each click. All right. How to do this? A timer. A timer is a great one to know how to do. Okay, now some programming languages and things like that have timers built into them. Um, you know, they just say start a timer and then tell me a timer, set a timer, things like that. Scratch kind of has one, but it, it works in hundredths of a second and it makes it hard to use. So we're going to make our own timer. And this will teach you one of the tricks of programming, especially in a language like Scratch. It is sometimes a good strategy to have two programs operating at once, two programs working at once that are doing different things that you both need done. So right now we've got one program working that's in charge of picking random locations, showing up, and keeping track of the score. And I need another, I need also to keep track of the time and counting down, but this one's kind of going based on score, the other one's going to be going based on time, and they're kind of different. So it actually makes better sense to have them be separate. So what I'm going to do is just get another when I receive start round. And this one is going to be all about the timer. All right. So now I said Scratch has a timer, but we're basically going to make our own. And I'm pretty sure once you kind of get the idea of it, that you're going to kind of say, oh, I think I, you know, I can say how to do this in English. And that will tell you how to do it in programming. So you say, okay, well, I want to keep track of a timer. I want to keep track of how many seconds there are. So when you keep track of something, that's a variable. So we're going to make a variable and let's call it timer. Okay. All right. So now you think when you start your timer, you got to tell it how much time is on the timer. So you get set. And I don't want to set the level. I want to set the timer. And let's go ahead and say maybe 20 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to set the timer to 20 seconds. Okay. And then now, to count 20 seconds, I'm going to just do it a really dumb, easy way. I'm going to get a repeat loop, and I'm going to make it do repeat 20 seconds. I'm sorry, repeat 20 times. Wait one second. Guess how long that's going to be? 20 seconds. Yes, very exciting. Um, see how this is on top of this? You can just kind of put it here. They're really not bugging each other. When you click here, it brings this back up on top. Okay, and then when you click here again, it brings this one. So it's just, there isn't that much room on the scratch screen. All right, so we set a timer for 20. Um, we're repeating 
um, counting one second. I'm gonna put timer over here. But what we'd like to do is see the timer counting down. So every second, what I wanna do here is go to variables and I want to change the timer. And I wanna change the timer by negative one. I wanna see that timer counting down. So when I run this now, there's my timer 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and it's counting down one second at a time. Okay, all right, so this is pretty good. I've got a timer, but I gotta know what to do when my timer runs out of time. Like what should happen in the game when you run out of time? While I'm in here in this loop, I haven't run out of time. And if I beat a level, I start the round over again. And when I start a round over again, it resets my timer. So I don't have to worry about kind of the problem of these two fighting too much. But what I do have to worry about is what happens if this is going on, the person doesn't have 10 points yet, okay? And I run out of time. That means I've made it to this part of the program down here. And what do I want to do if you run out of time? Well, basically, I want to go to events and I want to broadcast that you lose. So where it says start round, I don't want to broadcast start round. I want to broadcast you lose. Could write game over, could write whatever you want. That's fine. Okay. I broadcast you lose. And then watch what I'm going to do. Um, this you win thing here. Like this, I'm just going to take this and put it on you lose. So now you lose is ready to go. And then basically I need this one too. When the space key is pressed, I'm going to borrow that one. Boom. Look at that. Super easy programming. Programmers are good at using things they've made over and over again. And now let's say instead of changing size and changing color, what you want to do is you want to make it ghost. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. Instead of ghost, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to get set color effect. Uh, sorry, set. And instead of color, I'm going to say set ghost. And so I'm going to set it to ghost 100. Okay, and then forever, I'm going to change ghost by negative two. That's going to make it get ghosty. I'm sorry, that's going to make it become visible. And then I'm going to back the other way, change it by two. Okay. And then if I want, I could also do size. No, that's totally fine. I could do that. Um, this will, let's see, let's go ahead and do size and ghosty. Um, so then that means I want to start this off at size one. So now let's check this. There it is. Boom, like that. Okay. And maybe three is getting too big. Oh, here I wasn't undoing the ghostiness. So I want to do, there we go. So I make it fade in and out. Look at that. Cool. Ooh, maybe I even do change color too. You could do as many things as you want. You get to pick, okay? Well, I still like that. All right, so we've got you lose going. Um, so now I'm back to my donut. So I broadcast you lose. And the only other thing is, if this game were going, the donut would still be bouncing around the screen while you lose was happening. So what I wanna do is get that one from control that stops everything, not stop all, but stops other scripts in this sprite and that will stop this forever loop here, sorry, or this repeat until loop from randomly placing the donut. Okay, all right, so here's what happens with the timer. We're all good, and everything is looking all nice. And about the only other thing we might want to think of is that, you know, when you beat a level, we reset the timer, we're fine, but let's say you win the game. So you win the game, everything's good, you've got the you win screen, you're feeling all proud of yourself, but guess what's happening? The timer is still counting down. 
So you win the game. And after 20 seconds, basically this guy is going to pop up and say, oh, you lost. And so you're going to see you win and you lose at the same time. So how do we fix that? Well, after you win the game, we stop other scripts in this sprite. And that tells this guy here to stop counting down. Okay? Very, very cool, very simple, very easy. And that is our timer. Uh, let me show it to you again. Make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. And there you go. So there is our timer. All right, so now let's ask the next one. We want to have this game not just wait the same amount of time every single time, but we want it to wait a different amount of time that gets faster and faster as the game goes on. Well, that sounds like kind of like our timer or like our score or our level that it's like changing as the game goes on, like we're keeping track of something. And again, if you say it in English words, like what we're keeping track of is like how long to wait. Okay, so I'm gonna go to variables and I'm gonna make a variable called wait time. Like how long to wait? You're gonna wait wait time. Okay, so I've got a variable called wait time. And now what I'm gonna do is when I say wait, I wanna say wait, wait time seconds. All right, now in the beginning, how long should wait time be? I have to set wait time in the beginning. It's always important to set your variables. And in the beginning of a round, we're gonna make it that wait time starts at two seconds. We'll make it start off pretty easy. Okay, so now basically every time it waits, it's gonna wait two seconds and that's totally fine. But remember the trick we wanted to do. Every single time the sprite gets clicked, we change the size, that makes it a little bit harder. Okay, and maybe even let's make this game a little bit harder. Minus three, so we're gonna make it get smaller faster. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna change wait time and we want it to get smaller. Now, if I said by negative one, if wait time started at two, negative one the first time would make it go down to one, negative one the second time would make it go to zero, and that would just be too fast. You would never be able to click on it. So negative one is way too much. If I do something like negative 0.1, that actually works pretty good. Negative 0.2 would be probably too fast. So maybe negative 0.15. Let's try that. That might be too fast, but we'll see. Right, so there's my donut. There's my donut. And it's getting faster little by little. This is still pretty doable. But you can see it's starting to get faster. Whoa! Little sucker, okay, and but now it's back to two, and so we're doing good, okay? So you get the idea of that, that this basically, I create a variable called wait time. Instead of just waiting two seconds always, I wait wait time second. In the beginning, wait time is two, but every single time I click on the donut, I make wait time get a little bit smaller. Okay, all right, so this is the beginning part of this game. These are the first two um, kind of easy bonus things that'll take you up to 25 points. All right, so we got some time here. I wanna show a couple more features. Oh, ha, that was funny, I tried to do a scratch thing. All right, so the first one I wanna show you is an improved intro screen, better looking animation. All right, so I'm gonna come back here and I wanna show a very simple animation you could do at the beginning of the game. All right, so I brought in Homer Simpson and I had him hanging out here. You could use Homer during the cutscenes. You could use Homer for the beginning. Lots of different places and ways you could use Homer. All right, now I wanna go to the intro really quick so I can see it. So here's the intro. Now I wanna go back to Homer really quick and I want to see Homer, there he is. So I want to put Homer maybe like right there. I'm going to go to motion. And I'm going to tell Homer where to go. 
And now I don't want to hide him. I actually want to see Homer. So I'm going to go ahead and get show like that. And now basically what I want to do with Homer is I want to make it look like he's eating a donut. Like see how he's holding up that donut and then I'm going to make it look like he puts the donut in his mouth. So I'm going to go to costumes here. Um, I've got one with him standing up eating the donut. I could just switch between those two, but let's play around here. Let's see if we can do this easy. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this costume. Okay, so now I have two of them. Okay, and basically this little box down here lets me select. So I'm going to select like that. Okay. All right. Um, actually, what I'm going to do first, now that I think about it, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. There we go. Okay. And then now I'm going to get the eraser tool and I'm going to make the eraser small, maybe like 20. Okay. And then I'm going to like erase half the donut. like that. There we go. Okay, yeah, that looks good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this selecting tool, and I'm going to grab Homer's arm like this, okay, and maybe about like that much. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to move it like that, and I'm going to put it kind of maybe like that. And now let's see how that looks, okay? Now, it's not perfect, um, but you get the basic idea. If I wanted, I could probably, you know, try to color this in, make it a little bit better. Um, here, I'll show you a tiny trick. So, like, watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get the paintbrush. For the color, I'm going to use this eyedropper thing, and I'm going to pick a color right near Homer's arm. And so now I'm just going to go like that, maybe like that, and maybe like. Yeah, and then that makes it, you know, I filled it in a little bit. Nothing great, but that's fine. So there's Homer, and we're looking good. So now I've got two different costumes. And so watch what Homer's going to do. When the green flag is clicked, Homer shows up. He's just sitting right there. And then I'm going to create a forever loop. And in that forever loop, I'm going to just basically go look, switch costume to Homer Donut 2. And then I'm going to wait. A second. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to switch costume to three and wait a second. And he's just going to sit there going like that. Okay. And it's not very exciting, but it's not bad. Okay. Not bad at all. And then if I wanted, I could just do something super simple, like add another donut. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go find that donut. There's the donut again, okay? And then I'm basically gonna take the program from the, um, maybe from the fail one, because this is the one that ghosted, right? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop it on the donut. There's the donut, like that. I think I got it, there it is, okay? All right, and I don't want this to be when I receive you win, I want this to be green flag. I'm going to go to events when I get green flag. Okay, and this donut, I want to tell this donut where to go. All right, this is the donut that doesn't get clicked on. So maybe I'll have this donut show up right about there. I'm going to go to motions and I'm going to get that go to. Okay, and so now this donut, I think, is going to just forever fade in and out. Let's try it and let's see. All right, so there it is. Homer's animating, the donuts animating. And again, it took almost no work to do that, okay? And then obviously for a better intro screen, I would not have it say intro up at the top. I would have it say chomp the donut and I would have it say press the space bar to start. Let me show you one other thing that's kind of helpful to do on an intro screen. All right, what I wanna do here, see how we have all of these variables up here? Now, in general, anytime you want to see a variable, 
you have a check mark bar, a check mark next to it. So if I didn't want to see level, I could uncheck it, uncheck it, uncheck it, uncheck it. Now, so let's think about the ones we want to see. We want to see level, we want to see score, and we want to see the timer. We don't really need to see the wait time. The computer needs that, but we don't need to see it. But what I can do that's kind of cool is I can show and hide variables when it's like an intro screen. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hide the level, I'm gonna hide the timer, and I'm gonna hide the score, okay? And now when I run this, oh, sorry, that's when this sprite is clicked. I didn't mean to put these here. I'm gonna move these up like that, and then these should go here like that. So now green flag is clicked. You don't see these guys. And now when the space bar is pressed, all I'm going to do is basically do the exact same opposite. I'm going to get show, 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 and I'm going to show level, show score, and show timer. And now nothing there, animated, all cool. I press the space bar. Oh, and so now the only other thing would be to have this guy remember when the space bar is pressed. Um, what I want to do is have him stop what he's doing. Okay, so I'm going to have him. Um, oh, right, I'm going to go to control and I'm going to get that stop other scripts. Like that. And then I'm going to tell this guy to hide. Okay, so now I run the game. And it's all looking good. And now I press the space bar. Oh, and I need to do the same thing for Homer. So I'm just going to take this program, this one right here, and I'm going to drop it on Homer. So there it is. Okay. So now Homer knows to hide too when the space key is pressed. Boom. Now they're both gone, and our game starts off. All right. Okay, so let's check here. We got a cool um, improved game animation. Um, I'm not going to show you animated directions, but I do want to show you an animated icon moving around trying to get the ghost. All right, that's a good one to see. All right, so we have this mouse here. Um, this mouse is kind of cool looking. It has got costumes that make it look like it's opening and closing. And so instead of just having it be like the mouse pointer that clicks on the donut, what we want to do is have the mouse move around the screen. All right. So green flag click, I mean, green flag hide, that makes sense. And when the round starts, that's when we want our mouse basically to be going wherever the mouse pointer goes. So when I receive start round, I just said I want the mouth to go wherever the mouse pointer goes. So here's go to, and it says random position, but if you click on this, one of the places you can go to is the mouse pointer. Now, if I do that once, it's going to go to where the mouse pointer is once, but what happens if the mouse pointer moves? I want it to go to the mouse pointer always, like forever. And you think, ooh, forever, I know how that works. So you just go to control, you get forever, and you say, forever, go to the mouse pointer. Now, the only problem is we told it to hide. So it's like, oh, yeah, I got to tell it to show. And now, watch how this works. Press start the game, and now the mouse is always moving around the screen wherever you put the mouse. Okay, so one thing you notice, the mouse is in front of the donut, like it's blocking it. Well, that doesn't quite seem right. The donut should be in front of the mouth. And since I'm putting the donut on the screen again and again, I want to make sure this donut is in the front. So I'm going to come here to the donut. Here's where it gets put on a random spot. And I'm going to get this one that says go to front layer. I'm here in looks. It's at the bottom of looks and it says go to front layer. And I'm going to put it right there after the go to. So now when I run this, okay, now the mouth is behind the donut and now it looks a little better. All right. So now how do I get my mouth to animate? Well, seems like the easiest way to do it is just next costume. 
Okay, so if I do this, and now the mouse is like chomping and you think, okay, wait a second, that's too fast. So let's do a little bit of a weight. And let's say maybe wait 0.1 seconds like that. And so now we run it. Okay, and now that's pretty good. But now it's a little bit laggy. And some of you are kind of thinking, gosh, I just made this game lag 0.1 seconds every time I try to move. And you're thinking, hmm, I don't like having these two parts be together. I want the moving to be super fast. I want the animating to be on its own time. And it turns out that in most games, you have one move, you have one program for the movement, and you have a separate program for the animation. So I'm basically going to just like copy this like that. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need show either, so I can just right click on it and say delete that block because I'm already showing here. And now basically I'm just going to put the animation in here. So now the animation happens over here, but the movement happens over here, and it doesn't make the game lag. Now I go like this and boom, all fast, all good. All right, now the last thing we should probably do is have there be some kind of an animation when the donut gets eaten. Okay, so let's go look. Let's see if we've got any costumes. We've got a tree and that's not a very helpful costume for the donut getting eaten. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a costume. It won't be great, but it won't be bad. Let's try it. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this donut. I just right click on it and say duplicate. Okay, and now I'm gonna come down here and convert to bitmap. And what that lets me do is use the eraser tool. Okay, so now I can kind of basically just come in and do something like this. Maybe like that, okay, and now I'll erase all of this too. And there is my half eaten donut. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to use my eraser tool and maybe I'll just leave like a little bit of donut left. Maybe like that much. I don't know. I'm not an artist. You'll get the idea from this and then you can decide how good you want it to look. Okay, so now I've got three donuts. And what I'm going to do is when the donut gets eaten, before it hides, I'm going to do a couple of steps. I'm going to go looks, switch to costume, and not tree. I want to go to donut two, okay? And then I'm going to wait a little bit, maybe like 0.2 seconds, something like that. And yes, this will slow things down, but that's okay. I'm going to duplicate these guys because I basically want to use them again. Now I'm going to switch to donut three, wait 0.2 seconds, and now I'm going to hide. All right, so now when I run the game, there's my mouse. Oh, and I, you notice that I got to tell the game to start in the right donut costume. Just like when I start a round, um, I tell it like how much, what the score is and things like that. I want to tell it what the right costume is um, to start a round. I'm going to come here, like I reset the size. I'm going to reset the costume to the original donut. So I've got my good donut, and now when I bite it, like that, look at that. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I get it, right. So every time after I finish eating the donut, I want to reset the donut back to the original. And this is just like one of those ones where you run your game, you see what's happening, and you think, oh, yeah, I got done eating, and I left it in this costume. I need to tell it to go back to the costume. And part of what programming is about is you getting really good at telling the computer exactly what to do. All right, let's run this again one more time just to make sure it's all good. Boom. And now my donut has this nice animation for getting chewed on. Okay. All right, folks. That is a pretty nice collection of stuff. Let's see. Was there anything else I was going to do? Different ghosts at each level. Oh yeah, I'll show you different ghosts. Oh, right, right, right. I did want to show you this one. Okay. 
So I want to show you a slightly different way of thinking about the game. Okay, so instead of going to bench with a view for our backdrop, I'm going to go to the forest. And instead of um, having our costume be the donut, I want to have our costume be the tree. So just kind of watch how this looks. So here's our forest. And then look at the tree. Look at how different that is as a game. Like that tree sometimes is hard to pick out from the backdrop. And all of a sudden you've created a game that's kind of tricky. Like let's say you had a bowl of popcorn and you put a piece of popcorn in there and maybe you put cheese popcorn and it's normally white popcorn or something like that. Um, I don't know why this, oh, I ran out of time in the game ended. that's what happened. Um, or you could do like you've got a, an underwater scene with all sorts of fish in it. And then you have one of the fish be the one that just randomly appeared. And so they've got to be able to identify it. Um, there's all sorts of things you could do instead of it being a mouth, maybe it's an ax and you chop it down. And on level one, it's find the tree in the forest. Level two, it's find the fish in the pond. Level three, maybe it's like find the snake in the desert or find the scorpion in the desert. Or you could make some pretty cool scenes that again are just kind of fun and help make the game more interesting, okay? All right, folks, that is, I think, all I want to demo for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to stop.